Hello, everybody. It's me, Dan Phelps. And today I'd like to talk to you about the whammy bar, this thing here that you may or may not have on one of your guitars. Uh, if you do, this video is for you. I'm going to talk about my tremolo setups on my guitars and give you a couple of easy exercises to begin to incorporate this into your playing. For over the last few years, having a floating tremolo system has really become part of my sound and my voice on the guitar, uh, inspired by people like David Torn, Adrian Ballou, Jeff Beck, of course, one of the masters of the tremolo, uh, and Terry Ripdahl. I've gotten really into it, and the reason I like having a floating trim is that it turns the guitar into a sort of quasi-fretless instrument. I'm able to inflect my playing with a lot of more organic vocal textures or make the guitar sort of sound like other instruments from other cultures. So that's really exciting to me, and it's become an expressive tool for me. There's many different kinds of tremolo systems out there in the world. Uh, I have guitars such as this one, which is equipped with a six screw tremolo system, kind of like a classic Strat, except that this one has been routed out in the back so that I'm able to pull up a lot on the bar. I tend to have two springs in my tremolos. You can have upwards of five, and this just controls the amount of tension that's on the bar. I like it to be very sensitive and responsive I have other guitars with different systems on them, such as this Ronin Morningstar. This has a two-pin man tremolo, so what that means is that there are two posts that the tremolo sits up against, and it has sort of a knife edge that it rocks on. Again, we have two springs in the back, and it's routed out for a lot of travel. Now, depending on the guitar, the tremolo will feel really different, and there's a lot of factors. You could spend a long time chasing down all the different things that affect that. Uh, for instance, the neck and the rigidity of the neck wood will really influence how a tremolo feels. Uh, the strings will have a lot of influence over how the tremolo feels and how far uh, and in what way each string travels in terms of pitch number of springs and also the tension of the springs. You might get some really loosey-goosey worn out springs that feel real swimmy, kind of like a Bigsby, or you might have some tight springs that have a lot of snap and they kind of return to zero really quickly. So lots and lots of factors. Uh, each guitar is different and you just have to sort of practice that guitar to kind of get into the zone of what it's offering you at any given time. So you know, a lot of people have a Strat or a guitar with a tremolo and they'll use it in such a way where they'll play a lick and at the end they'll play a nice pretty chord. And they'll put a little bit of wiggle on it. What I find about that is it's a little disappointing. I wish that people would go a little further with the expressive power of this thing. So in the last few years I've really taken a deep dive into it. I've started playing more and more with just my fingers because that allows me to get a lot of fingers on the strings and still work the bar at the same time. You'll see, again, guys like David Torn and Jeff Beck playing in this style. And uh, I find it hard with a pick to work the tremolo and also play at the same time. So this has become part of my style as well. There's all of the sort of standard things that people do with the tremolo. You've got the shimmer and kind of the slow, the slow warble of pitch. What's nice is to not rely on one speed or to just automatically go to one speed of vibrato, but to actually change it. You can kind of pretend like you're a B3 player and you're changing the speed on the Leslie as the chord dies out. Or you can do it the opposite direction, slow to fast.
And then you can use the whammy bar to slide into notes and you can kind of create slide guitar type sounds or pedal steel type sounds. Especially if you're using a volume pedal. You can also inflect notes with a quick dip of pitch at the beginning by pulling up, which is particularly nice if you're traveling down through a scale. Gives you sort of a Eastern sound, if you will. So if you combine slide ups, slide downs, you can create some really complex uh, kind of rubber bandy sounding lines. That's really nice. Being able to apply individual vibrato to each note, depending on the feeling that you have at the moment is really wonderful. And then there's also something that I like to think of as the Jeff Beck warble, which is where you just sort of flick the bar. You can either flick it or pull it back and let it go and the inertia of the bar as it bounces back and forth and uh, starts to return to zero will create this sort of warble effect. And depending on how gushy how sensitive your tremolo system is on your guitar the warble effect will be more accentuated or less it's this guitar is a little tighter feeling so it's a shorter less dramatic tremolo effect so that's kind of a beginning vocabulary of ways that you can accentuate notes the next level of using the whammy bar is actually using it to move pitches around to specific pitches so you might move things up a half step, say, or down a whole step. If you have a routed trim like I do, you can go further. There, I can't quite get all the way up the major third on the B string, so I pulled up on the bar and then I helped it with a little bend. It helps if you make a face at the same time. Uh, how do you begin to develop that facility to be able to go to specific notes? Well, the, the way that I've learned is not unlike when you're learning how to bend a string with your left hand, you can play your starting pitch. In this case, let's just say second fret on the G string and play the pitch that you want to go to and then really slowly bend up to it. So So slowly bend up to it and then try and stay there and park yourself right at that pitch. A little bit of vibrato helps kind of mask the intonation issue if you need to do that. And you can practice that through scales. And that's good to do because each string behaves differently under tension. They, they, they move at different rates. So as you start to get 
a feel for being able to go to a pitch and land there. And as a side, uh, as an aside to that technique, I find that it's helpful to anchor my forearm to the guitar and use that as my leverage so that I'm able to have some stability as I go to those notes. So as you develop that ability, you can start to practice licks that have those moves in them. For instance, I might want to do a lick that goes, but I'll do it with the bar. And then I'll start to add a couple more moves, a couple more whammy bar moves in there. And I'll really work on it until I've got it smooth and in tune. And just make it more and more complicated. Um, add the warble in, maybe. There we go. Put it on that, that spot right there, right before the last note. So as you practice these different techniques, and you start to learn to bend the strings in tune with the whammy bar, you can string them together into more and more complicated phrases. And as complicated as you want, and eventually you'll find that those things start to come out in your playing. Uh, you'll, especially with a little bit of distortion, adding some gain to it and some sustain, you'll hear a lot of these nuances coming out. <laughs> that's really fun is to start on a note, pull off a step lower, but then pull the bar back up. So if you do this fast, it sounds really cool. So take each of those steps, take it slow, especially when you're learning to pull up or move down to certain pitches and you're getting used to the way that the different strings travel with the bar, and then start stringing those together into longer phrases. You can even take normal licks, sort of guitaristic licks, and try to figure out how to perform them with the bar. This is something that I'll do even just so that I have more than one way of playing something. Uh, for instance, maybe... <laughs> Experiment, be fearless, have fun, enjoy it, and let me know how it's working for you. Send me a note at hello at danphelps.com. Send me a note in the comments below and let me know what's working, what's not, and uh, let's keep the dialogue going. As always, you can subscribe to my email list below, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you see all of my videos here. Thank you very much, and I hope this was helpful for you. See you later.